Hi, tea timers. So today I'm drinking pure jasmine, which is jasmine flowers <laughs> layered in with green tea. So I've drunk it before, but it, um, it's really nice. It's pounding rain today, so I thought I'd wear something cheerful. It might not be pounding rain where you are, but right here it's pounding rain, so I thought I'd wear something bright to cheer us up. Mm -hmm. So first off, before I get started, I wanted to do a little housekeeping. Um, <clears throat> remember when I told you the story about uh, Dick Van Dyke's wife, uh, partner, Michelle? Well, apparently she was his partner, not his wife. And um, and uh, the person, I got her mixed up. I got Lee Marvin, and thanks to Jubal and my sister Jen, I got Lee Marvin mixed up with Lee Majors. And um, Lee Majors is the one who played apparently a $6 million man, not a $1 million man. <laughs> I, I guess to me, it's like a million, six million. They're both like an enormous amount of money. Um, so I, I got that mixed up. So I, when you guys watch my tea times, just know I'm gonna get things mixed up because I'm not very good at Hollywood things or who's done what or what people's names are. I just know people who I work with and that's that. Oh, um, this is a necklace my boy Will and his uh, wife Amy gave me last Christmas and I'm missing them because we won't see them this Christmas. So I put that on as well. Alrighty, now let's see, what shall I do today? So many good questions from you guys. That was great. Uh, okay, I'll do this one. Um, Cassidy, fantastic Tilly, she's at. Um, your first tea time cameo. Hey, Anna. Yeah, she insisted on, you can't see her. There she is. <laughs> she insisted on joining me again this morning. So uh, she wrote, I really liked listening to some of the methods you were taught. Would you say that your experience taking ballet benefited you when you started acting lessons? Dance seemed to tap into a lot of emotion as well. Also, what was it like working with Peggy Fury? Well, yes, dance does. I, I remember the um, one of the people who worked on Fame wrote to me later and said that it was like watching me dance was like watching me trying to exercise something. And I think in a way it was dance for me. So it was a way because I hadn't found my words yet. So wait, I'll put this book down. I hadn't found my words yet. So, so much had happened in my life that I was keeping stuff down and tamped down and dance when there's a music and you aren't using your words, but you're speaking with your body was a way for me to communicate and a way for me to acknowledge the pain and the beauty of everything, I guess. And um, so it really was a refuge for me. It was a, it was difficult and very challenging, especially because I started so late, but it, it filled my heart um, with, with song in a way. Um, so when I couldn't dance anymore, I was devastated. Um, and then I found my way into acting. So how I found Peggy Fury. I, when I first came to LA, my, um, my sister Jen was there. She was already acting and she said, all right, first thing you need to do is get your photos. I think I told you this about text. You need to get your photos. So we got my headshots and then she said, okay, now you need to, and she took me to like acting class. And then she said, okay, now you need to um, get in a play because she was in a play. She was in a play about Dionysus and, and they danced around and they had grapes and everything like that. And, um, and it was Greek chorus, the, the one that she was doing. And our, our plays ran uh, along the same time, so I didn't get to see her, but she was, um, so she had me audition for something. So the first thing I auditioned for was The Girl on the Via Flamina, which was um, a play that took place in World War II, and I played the maid. And the guy who was in, he took over for the Waltons. Uh, his name was Robert. I don't remember his last name, <laughs> sorry. I do remember that he was, he was nice. He was very quiet. And I, I remember he had lots of furry hair on his arms. Not, not, not bad, just, I just noticed like, whoa, because I guess I was uh, younger and you didn't see a lot of, I don't know, hair on people. The dancers, I don't know, maybe all the dancer, guy dancers got rid of it or something, I don't know. But I, I remember being surprised by that. Um, not, not bad, just it was interesting. <laughs> I don't know what I would 
I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, another person who was in that place, so there was Cla uh, Claudia, and I remember she was the understudy for Brett, who was playing the main person. And I remember once uh, Claudia uh, was, um, she always wore, she was studying. So a lot of them studied at Peggy Fury's. And I remember Claudia, she always wore this dark red lipstick and she had her hair, she had dark hair and she was very beautiful. And one day she said, uh, she was, we were changing because all, all of us changed in the same dressing room. And she wore garters and stockings like and I was like holy smokes she said it'll drive the men wild or something like that and I went back and I told Jen and she's like oh we want to drive people wild <laughs> I didn't know that people did so and we so we trotted out and got ourselves some too because not just because it would drive people wild but because lots of times you would run one stocking because that was the days where people wore nylons You'd run one, but you wouldn't run the other, but you'd have to throw them both out. So this way, our stockings lasted twice as long because if you run ran one leg, that no big deal. You just toss that one stocking out, but you still have the other one. So I learned that on that play. But also there was a young actor who, it was his first play as well, whose name was Sean Penn. And, uh, and uh, so he played the soldier and I played the maid. And, um, all of them always talked about Peggy. So Robert, Claudia, uh, Sean, uh, uh, all studied with Peggy Fury. And I remember uh, they would always talk about her in these sort of hushed tones and talk about the loft studio. And oh, I thought that must be the best place ever because they talked about how brilliant she was and how difficult it was to get in and how they had a three year waiting list to just audition to get to study with her. And I was like, oh my, oh my. So we practiced and practiced the play. It was an equity waiver play at the Gene Darnowski Theater. <clears throat> and one night, they were all a flutter before the play. And they were all like, Peggy's coming, Peggy's coming to the play, Peggy's coming. And I was like, oh, Peggy's coming, oh. <laughs> I was nervous too, even though I didn't even know her. But um, so, so then we did the play and afterwards, instead of hanging out together, they all went out with Peggy because they studied with her and they were her students. And, and I went home to my little apartment that was underneath Jen's apartment. And uh, in the middle of the night, there was a bang, 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 bang on my window. And I was like, what? My heart's going like this. And I, I go to the window and I open it up and it's Sean Penn and he goes, let me in. So I opened it up all the way and he climbed in through the window and I shut the thing and locked it. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, um, he'd just come back. They had all gone to, uh, oh, where was it? It was a place on opposite a uh, big farmer's market that sells canters. They had all gone to canters afterwards. And he said, all that Peggy could talk about was me and how brilliant I was. And I just had five lines in that play, but I was in the play a lot. And I just would watch things and I would clean things and I would make the bedroom right. And I remember you know, smelling the woman's soap who I really admired. I can't remember what her name was. But anyway, he said she loved you. And she said, if you want to study with her, you don't even have to audition. She'll take you on. And I was like, oh my gosh, Peggy will take me on. I don't have to wait because I was going to put my name on the wait list for the three years to wait to study with her. So that's how I got to study with Peggy. And um, she was a teacher who changed my life. In, in discovering my characters and in working on my characters, I discovered so much about myself. I remember once there was somebody <clears throat> who was, um, we were doing this play. So what we'd do is we'd work on one, one playwright. So for like one session, which would be around three months, all of us would be working on Strindberg or all of us would be working on Pinter or we'd all be working on Chekhov or, you know, or um, the only the only screenplays we ever did was Ingmar Bergman because he wrote so specifically. And um, so that that was my home and I would study with her and I would, she would teach me so much. And I remember with Sissy in the Boom Boom Room once I was watching and I had, uh, somebody else had done the, a scene and um, and she said, now what's, what's the thing that's going on with her? She, she, she dies but she lies about lots of little, little, little lies. And why does she do that? And she said, when somebody lies about a lot of little things, little things, little things, it's because they're, they are hiding the big lie in their life. 
and I could feel my whole face get red because I lied about a lot of little things because I wasn't facing the big truth in my life. And, um, and I, I, it, it shook me. So there was things like that. And then from then on, I'm like, I'm gonna just try to be ruthlessly honest. And I've tried and I've tried my whole life to just be as careful as I can uh, with the truth. Um, if I ever find myself slipping a little bit, um, then I'm like, okay, what's, what's the big lie that you're covering up? And then I make changes. So um, she was amazing. I remember, I remember once um, uh, we were driving. Uh, so, so it was kind of like my new introduction to a lot of different things and um, doing that play. So I got to study with Peggy. I remember once um, Sean was bringing me back to meet his mom and she was in, um, they lived in Malibu. And um, I didn't, I didn't know where it was. He's just like, hey, we're gonna, you wanna come? We can go surfing. So I was like, okay. But when we went, he would drive through the canyons, but what he would do, because I didn't realize he his gas tank was on empty. <laughs> it was a long way. So what he'd do is he'd get speed up on a hill and then he'd switch off his engine and then he'd coast down the hills and as far up as he could on going up the other hill and then turn it on and get up the next hill and then zoop down. And uh, so I, I'd never seen anybody do that. And um I don't know, there was just like, like lots of memories, both good and bad. And, but Peggy was amazing. She taught me so much. And I remember um, I, would go to, I would go to our classes, which was four days a week, but I'd also watch other classes because I could learn a lot by watching what she said to other people. And I remember um, she was the first person who said I was a writer. And uh, I, it was just, uh, I thought I thought she was wrong, but a couple years after she passed, it turned out she was right. And I've, I've been writing books ever since. But I remember, um, yeah, I remember, I remember when she passed, I was doing, um, she had asked to see me um, after Agnes and she had really loved Agnes. She had seen an er, uh, early filming of it and And she told me stuff and we'd gone for lunch and um, and I had my baby with me and and then and then I had to go to New York right shortly after for the press junket and um, and I came back and it was uh, the house was lit up which was unusual it was a little after midnight when I flew back in and um, yeah my uh, my husband at the time, I came in through the door trying to be quiet and he came out of the bedroom and he goes, thank God you're finally home. He said, I've w w wait, waited up to tell you, uh, you got a phone call, Peggy's, Peggy's dead. And I said, what? What? And he said, stop looking at me like that. I didn't kill her. And he turned around and went back into the, um, into the bedroom and I, my knees gave way. And I remember I was crying, 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 but crying really quiet so that I wouldn't bother him or wake up my daughter who was in her bedroom, who was just a little baby. And uh, it was a huge loss because she was a mentor toward to me and she taught me so much and gave me so much of myself. And I remember going to her house. Um, people said, you can come to her house. Everybody's going and she, I went there and uh, her husband, was there and and all her students were there and um michelle pfeiffer was there she was um in a different class i remember lily tomlin studied with her uh just a lot of really great eric stoltz studied with her she created uh, uh, so many wonderful actors um she could just put her her finger on what was what was wrong in a scene like you could do a scene and the whole scene, you'd be totally locked in. And then there would be one or two spots. And she had narcolepsy, so sometimes she would be, um, she would be digging in her purse when somebody's doing a scene. And then her head would start to nod off. And you'd just think she's asleep, but people would just keep doing her scenes, I, I noticed. And then, and then they'd finish the scene and she'd straighten and she'd say, all right. And she'd walk 
out and she'd say, when you did this, and she'd go boop, 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 and she would do it, and she would do it perfectly, and she'd put her finger, even though she was like half asleep, on what needed to be done. And I remember there were sometimes when I do a scene and she'd say, right there, where you picked up the object, you went out just for a second, and then you were back in, and then right there, and she'd pick like the one or two places where I hadn't, the rest I could fool everybody, but I could never fool Peggy. She just had this kind of, um, and I didn't want to, but it just helped me learn to trust when it's right, when it's wrong, when it's, when it's true. And when you flicker outside of your head for a moment and start commenting on what you're doing. So she was such a, a gift to me and, uh, she's such a part of me. So that's when I, um, wrote my first book. I first sold it as Anna Fury <laughs> and, uh, but then I couldn't get, uh, the publisher who wanted to buy it um, wanted Anna Fury to go on book tour. <laughs> and I couldn't go on book tour because I was made Tilly and very famous. <laughs> so I had to uh, publish it under my own name. I found a different, uh, we found a different publisher. So, um, so that's what happened with that. But I owe so much of my life and who I've become and um, how I was able to dive into the characters of my acting and my writing to Peggy, um, who was the first person who told me I was an, a writer. And I thought, I thought she was, uh, had lost her marbles, <laughs> but I guess I am. So anyway, um, that's all happy. I hope you all have a good couple days. I'll see you on Thursday and, and thank you everybody for all the haircut love. It, it just lifted my heart. And I like thinking of you guys all being like, ah, my little sister Becky was like, she said, she was shouting back at the thing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Make me put it down, put it down. <laughs> and she said, and then I all of a sudden realized, wait a minute, I'm watching this after she's done it. She's already done it. <laughs> so Thank you all and um, have a wonderful couple days and I'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye.